Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'll be sharing my time with the member for Sydney, Victoria. I first want to acknowledge that I am addressing you all today from the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. At the core beliefs of the Anishinaabe is the notion of respect. Each element is part of the cycle of life. Each has its purpose and deserves as much respect. Our relationships are what matter the most, and we should cherish them. Madam Speaker, I would be lying if I said anything other than I am deeply saddened to be here this evening. Yet again, to continue this essential conversation on the real crisis that is missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and two-spirited people, because even if the conversation is continuously evolving, we have to admit that it is not concrete, rapid, and transformative enough for the families who are missing loved ones, like families back home in Fredericton right now. How did we get here, Madam Speaker? A question we don't ask ourselves enough. I remember first learning about this issue. My stepfather taught Native Studies, and he brought his lived experience to the classroom. He took part in the Gunasatage resistance. He's represented consistently Wabanaki voices at the United Nations. He is a lodge keeper, a language keeper, a pipe carrier. He would share with me from a very young age the truth about injustice in Canada for Indigenous peoples and how women were targeted for their strength, their leadership, and their resilience. Women and girls give life to the nations and were inherently a threat to the goals of colonization and assimilation. I learned with horror how Indigenous women were killed or went missing at significantly higher rates and that law enforcement was far too often slow to investigate or pursue justice, if it was pursued at all. Only 53% of murder cases in the Sisters and Spirit database have been solved, compared to 84% of all murder cases across the country. Madam Speaker, we often felt alone in our efforts to bring awareness. There was no media coverage at that time, no demonstrations, no one knew or cared to know what we were talking about. We have come a long way in Canada since that time, but that fact alone will not bring these women home. This issue is about misogyny, it's about racism, and it's about systemic discrimination. Today, my wish would be that this discussion can also be about hope. Hope not just for awareness or education, but hope for broad consensus and swift action. Hope for adequate resources, policy change, and justice. That is why we are here, to ensure the laws of the land and Canadian society are accountable, and to ensure that women and girls are no longer taken from us by violence. Missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls is not a phenomenon. It is not the result of unexplained circumstances. We know the root causes, and we can and must address them. We know, for example, that housing is a critical piece of this issue, that Indigenous women are five times more likely to experience homelessness. Current investments are not enough. But I do know that together with my colleagues in this House, we are making a difference in communities across the country. We are seeing the narrative shift. Solutions do exist. I look around this chamber, and I'm incredibly proud and honoured to work with such devoted and informed MPs from every party and every corner of Canada. I thank all of them for their work, their tireless advocacy, their friendship, their teachings and tenacity, and I'm grateful to know that real allies are in positions to act. I feel a synergy that did not exist in this House or in this country before. Madam Speaker, I am more certain than ever that we will drive the change to make things better. I know that each of you addressing this House this evening are deeply influenced by the conversations you have with community leaders, with elders, with organizations and representatives who are leading the cause and guiding the path forward. I want to take this opportunity to thank the people in my own riding who are making a true difference in people's lives. The Indigenous women of the Wabanaki Territories, the Under One Sky Friendship Centre and their team, the Giganu Transition House, traditional leadership, chief and councils, health directors, education directors, language and culture teachers. I am using my voice to uphold theirs because they are the ones that inspire me to do more. Let's not lose this momentum Let's not lose another life to violence against missing Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited people. May 5th, we mark Red Dress Day. Red Dress walks bring people together and give strength to families and loved ones. Public vigils shine a light on those lost. May we never forget their stories, their passions. May we honour their lives, and may we act now to end this crisis. Thank you. Merci. And we'll leave in. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? Honourable Member for Nunavut. Uh, I'd like to thank the member for her intervention. Um, the motion specifically asks that more immediate and substantial investments, including a red dress alert system, uh, is created. 
uh, knowing that the uh, infrastructure already e exists because of the Amber Alert, uh, does the member agree that there needs to be immediate action to ensure that the Redress Alert system is uh, put in place so that we can do a better job ensuring that Indigenous women, girls, uh, and Two-Spirit people are protected right at the time that they are considered uh, missing or murdered? Member for Fredericton. Mr. Speaker, and I, I, I thank my colleague from Nunavut. Uh, I deeply appreciate uh, the teachings that she brings to our, our Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs. Um, I absolutely support the redress alert. I was, I was really pleased to see it as part of our 2023 budget that the steps are already there uh, to get this moving forward. And I also just appreciate the leadership from the, the member from Winnipeg Centre uh, for bringing this forward. It, it wasn't something that I, had, that I had heard of before, and I really do think it would make an immediate impact and, and at least, again, mobilize that call to action that we're hearing about. It would, it would bring that awareness piece and realize how urgent this crisis really is, and I believe it would save lives. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments. Questions and comments. The honourable member for San Diego Province. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and my honourable friend from Fredericton. I know how closely she is engaged with the Indigenous communities near where Fredericton sits on the land of the Wallastuk. Uh, I thank her for her speech and the language of that territory, Wallalan, and recognize that this opportunity that we have before us, as she said, that this is a moment where there's synergy, a moment where things have changed, and that we need to push forward to ensure that when a woman goes missing, an Indigenous woman goes missing, action is taken immediately. And I'd like to ask her if she agrees with me that one of the cultural changes that must take place urgently is within the approaches taken by policing, whether the RCMP or city police forces. Member for Fredericton. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank my honourable colleague uh, for that very important question. And as I mentioned in my speech, it's, 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 it's one of the root causes. It's one of the reasons why we have this issue and this crisis in Canada. Um, and, and I think it's incumbent on all of us as members of Parliament to do that work within our own communities, to have those conversations. Um, I personally meet with our, our, our J Division, RCMP um, leadership team uh, in, in my riding, with our, our Fredericton City Police, um, to, to constantly push them. How are they meeting the action plan? How are they strategizing to ensure that this, this, this does not come uh, to impact more families into our community? Um, I'm not always satisfied by the answers uh, that I get, but they know that I'm there. They know that I'm there pushing them, and I'm not going to give up until we, we see this uh, you know, come to a resolution. And so I, I thank the member very much for that question. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Brampton North. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, some of the questions that have arisen today is really uh, uh, have been touching. It's about the cross-partisanship work that's been done on the issue, and I really wanted to know uh, in terms of the work that the member has done on her committee, and uh, since being a member of parliament, uh, what she thinks has had the most impact and what else that she would like to achieve in her role as a member of parliament here. Honourable Member for Fredericton. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank my honourable colleague for that question. Um, I've really tried to look at this issue from a, a multifaceted standpoint. I think it's, it's, it's very complicated, um, and so I think there's many things that we can do. Uh, and I've been so incredibly uh, proud of the work of our Indigenous Northern Affairs Committee. Um, I have to member, mention again the member from Nunavut, the member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, the member from Desnethe, Misnipi, Churchill River. Uh, there's so many others. Member from Manitouaga. Uh, we, we work really collaboratively because we're all there for the right reasons, and we've all we've all come to an understanding. We began our began our committee actually with a, a blanket exercise, just for all of us to understand um, you know, the, this collective history that we have and our duty and responsibility as parliamentarians to, to, to be on the same page and to address this issue. Um, I was also really fortunate to be able to, to sponsor S219 in this House. It's a, an act to establish the National Ribbon Skirt Day on January 4th um, in, the, in the name of Senator Jane McCollum and um, for Isabella Kulak and her community in Saskatchewan. So these are concrete steps that we can take to honour and cherish Indigenous women, um, to uphold culture and identity in this country. Um, and I think that's a, a key component to this whole discussion this evening. 